Michael Kovring and Michael Spaver have been detained in China for nearly two years. They were picked up shortly after Canadian authorities arrested Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou at the request of the U.S. She is charged with bank and wire fraud for allegedly violating American sanctions on Iran. Reports, though, last week revealed the U.S. is in talks with Meng's lawyers on a deal that would allow her to return to China in exchange for admitting wrongdoing. I'm joined now by John Bolton in Washington. He served as U.S. President Donald Trump's national security advisor at the time of Meng's arrest. Hi, Ambassador Bolton. Good to have you back on the program. Thanks for making the time. Glad to be with you. I wanted to start off and ask you about the uh, reports late last week from the Wall Street Journal. In particular, they're reporting that a potential deal is on the table for Meng Wanzhou that could see her return home if she admits some kind of, of wrongdoing. How plausible do you think that is? Well, it's very hard to say. I mean, uh, we don't have any official comment from the U.S. Department of Justice. We shouldn't expect one. They don't comment on uh, these kinds of negotiations. Uh, one would surmise, therefore, the leaks came from Meng Wanzhou's side, and uh, it may reflect something they've asked the Justice Department to consider. But it's uh, unusual for this kind of agreement with respect to an individual, what's called a deferred prosecution agreement. That is, to my knowledge, almost exclusively used for deals with corporations or business entities that play out over a sustained period of time. So it could be that there are larger aspects of a case involved that would that would be against Huawei rather than against Hmong personally that we haven't seen publicly. I mean, there are, there are a lot of scenarios you could play out on this. It doesn't sound to me like it's a, a negotiation that's anywhere close to a resolution. You are familiar with the case, or you were familiar, especially during your time at the White House. Uh, were you surprised to even hear, I guess, the, the speculation around it? No, as I say, my, my guess is this is something that, that uh, Meng Wanzhou's lawyers, lawyers for Huawei, have proposed uh, to try and avoid having her actually extradited to the United States, which is the path that we're basically on now, still in the Canadian judiciary. Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm a Justice Department uh, alumnus. Uh, uh, the prosecutors are obligated to take any good faith uh, compromise proposal uh, seriously. They don't have to accept it, but they have to show their own good faith in turn. So I don't, uh, with the uh, uh, honestly limited amount of information we have, I'm, I'm not sure that this is a, a development I'd, I'd wait by the phone to hear further progress on. I know that, um, you know, both yourself, other members uh, of the White House administration at times, and then Canadian authorities, certainly, and, and political figures throughout this have maintained that this is about the rule of law. Uh, but there was that comment, of course, uh, uh, about 10 days after Meng was arrested by the president at the time around, uh, for example, you know, coming to some sort of arrangement or deal as part of a larger trading uh, arrangement or trading negotiations. Uh, do you think those comments undermine the case? No, I don't think they fundamentally undermine the case. They're more Donald Trump. All I can say is six weeks to go and he's going to be gone and he'll be a private citizen entitled to his First Amendment rights and not much more than that. Do you do you think during at the time, though, do you think it had an impact at all? I understand. I take your point, of course, that, that he's leaving. But did it impact, for example, uh, his conduct as far you know, we, we, we were kind of on pins and needles here. Is the president going to raise it, for example, with his counterpart in China? We know it, it did. It was raised at one point. But did that comment reflect, I guess, his behavior behind the scenes or the White House's pursuit behind the scenes? Well, not not really. I mean, it's uh, the president obviously has authority both because of his constitutional obligation to take care that the laws be faithfully executed and his foreign policy responsibility. Uh, to weigh circumstances where more than one interest is at stake. I, I don't think that's the case here. And I don't think there was any serious effort, at least before I left the administration, to do anything with uh, with that remark. I thought I think it would have been inappropriate. It was certainly unhelpful when he said it. I think it gave people the wrong impression. Uh, it's not the way the Justice Department uh, pursues such a case, which, look, if this had been an American corporation, an American uh, uh, chief accounting officer. Uh, uh, they would have pursued it with great vigor. That's why they're pursuing this one. Uh, and I just think it's more of the uh, yet another Trump anomaly than anything serious. The um, I, I'm wondering also what you think. I mean, so many Canadians on, on this side of the border are people who are, let's say, intimately involved with the case. 
say that you know they do not foresee Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor being released from Chinese detention unless there is some resolution one way or the other. So vis-a-vis -vis this kind of speculation or vis-a-vis -vis the end of the extradition uh, hearings in the process, they don't foresee those two uh, individuals being released by Chinese authorities before that resolution arrives. Do you think that's a fair assessment from what you saw? Well, I don't know. I think the entire Chinese behavior on this has been uh, 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 close to barbaric. Uh, uh, with Meng Wanzhou, there, there is no doubt there is a legitimate law enforcement at issue here. And in fact, uh, as it stands now in the in the Canadian judicial process, uh, the court has found there is dual criminality. Uh, the extradition proceedings are not finished yet, but that's a very significant uh, finding, and I think demonstrates that the case is uh, is something to be taken very seriously. The Chinese reaction to it uh, was was a kind of uh, unacceptable behavior that uh, I understand why uh, Canada is both outraged and a little worried about what it means. And, and I just say, look, if this is the way China behaves uh, before their power increases further in the world, imagine how it will behave uh, after that. And I think this is this is the time to stand up and say, unless China uh, adheres to the rule of law internally in China, uh, not much of what they say internationally or any commitments they make internationally are going to be taken seriously. The issue that Canada has had is though there have been, you know, our allies have certainly at times, uh, you know, come together on that message. It, it has not necessarily been the loudest cry, you know, uh, from, from allies altogether. I understand that the president raised it once, but you know, from your perspective, should should the outcry be larger internationally? Sure. Look, I, I think I think China is a significant threat to the West as a whole, and I think its behavior in this matter is substantial evidence uh, of the way it's going to treat the rest of the world. I, I think we see this playing out uh, in China now in a variety of steps: the illegal detention of of these two Canadian citizens the suppression of freedom in Hong Kong that was supposed to be gar guaranteed by the joint Sino-UK declaration that created the one country, two systems uh, uh, policy, uh, the repression of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, the repression of religious freedom generally. It's a long list. Uh, and it's something that, uh, that I do think uh, our friends in Europe especially need to take more seriously. This is the kind of regime that we're dealing with. And uh, the fact, for example, that they're putting uh, increased pressure on Taiwan shows how much they're afraid of the of the virus in Hong Kong spreading. If people in the mainland knew what kind of government existed on Taiwan, imagine uh, the effect that would have. Do you do you have a sense, though, that there is um, more? I, I'm just thinking I, I interviewed an ambassador from the UK uh, to Canada not too long ago, and she said the conversation, they were coming up with a statement on Hong Kong between the US, the UK, Canada, and a few other allies. And she said the, the work going on behind the scenes to put that statement together was a whole lot easier than it would have been a year ago, for example. Is that your sense? Do you think that they're, that things are moving in that direction? Well, I think I think it's I think it's going to change when when Trump leaves the White House. The fact is, his policy, quote unquote, uh, toward China has been harder line in the past, I'd say, six or nine months, uh, because he's recognized that with the uh, self-evident the cover up of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, its origins, its real effect on China, uh, withholding a lot of information that the rest of the world could have used uh, very effectively to combat the pandemic attitudes on China uh, are changing for the negative. In the US and Canada and Europe, polls are, are showing this increasingly. So for Trump, it was politically advantageous to take a harder line on China. And whereas when I was there, he didn't want to say anything about Tiananmen Square, uh, really didn't want to say anything about Hong Kong, when it became Trump's, uh, to Trump's political advantage to do so, yes, suddenly he's willing uh, to take a harder line. How the Biden administration will behave, we, we really don't know yet. I think it will be a major test of, uh, of uh, the direction of their foreign policy because it is, this is an existential issue for the United States in this century. Okay, Ambassador, I'll leave it there. I'm out of time. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's John Bolton, former National Security Advisor to President Donald Trump when Meng Wanzhou was arrested. <music> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.